Hello, Anne. Welcome to A Bit Lit. Thank you so much Hi, for joining Emma, me today. Thank you for having me. You're very, very welcome. It's a delight. And um, we know each other because we've worked together on a couple of productions. But for people who don't know you, would you mind starting by telling us a bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I am a dramaturg who is currently uh, based at the American Shakespeare Center uh, in Stanton, Virginia. I'm their literary manager. Um, I, my background is almost exclusively in new play dramaturgy and new play development. Um, though now in this current role, I'm doing uh, a smattering of production dramaturgy as well. Um, and uh, what else can I say? That's, that's sort of me in a nutshell, I think. <laughs> that's an excellent summary. Thank you. And for people who are watching this who don't have a clear idea of what the role of a dramaturg is, and particularly what the distinction you mentioned between new work versus production dramaturgy, could you say a bit more about that? Sure. Well, the first thing I'll say is for people who aren't sure they know what a dramaturg is, welcome to the club. Uh, <laughs> one of the great joys and great challenges of being a dramaturg is that there is no clear uh, definition, even among dramaturgs. Um, and I will also say that it's a relatively new theatrical um, position, so it's still in the process of sort of continually being redefined. Um, but for, for me, as someone who likes to lean into metaphor, which I think is also a, a very common thing among dramaturgs, I think of myself as a cartographer for a play. I, my work Ooh. is about trying to get a sense of the lay of the land, um, trying to identify where where the thorns are, where the bogs are, and where are the sort of natural, where is the natural majesty in the play as well. Um, and thinking about how can I communicate this cartography um, to people who might like to lead an expedition, a director, or settle there actors, um, but it's not actually my job to create the world or the landscape of the play. Um, that's the work of the playwright. So that's my like very um, metaphorical uh, way of thinking about dramaturgical work. Um, in a practical sense, a dramaturg can do like any number of tasks, um, which is in one of one reason why it's really hard to pin down. Um, but in thinking about new play dramaturgy, I think my work um, is pretty similar to the way that an editor might work with, with uh, a prose writer uh, in terms of offering feedback and questions and try, seeking to clarify how the text uh, reflects the, the writer's intent. Um, Production dramaturgy, which I also mentioned, um, tends to um, be more connected to the context of a play, whether that's uh, historical research or um, environmental research, um, to sort of what is the transition from um, the play text and the play world on the page, and how does that become uh, a lived theatrical experience and what, what um, knowledge bridges need to be built between the artists and the play, the audience and the play, the, the theater's administration and the play. Um, so that's sort of more how I think about that kind of work. That's fascinating. Thank you. And I think that's really helpful as a sort of out, a metaphorical outline. And I find it interesting how much both your metaphors are sort of spatial metaphors. So either in terms of yeah, working as a cartographer with this imagined place or building the sort of literal bridges that people can climb across to reach the work. And you mentioned that dramaturgs do tend to think in metaphor. So mm -hmm. at what point did you realise that the, the way you the way you think to do with your 
distance, sense of having a sense of what needs to happen to clarify a text or make a text closer to the author's intention and the way you think metaphorically and the way you like to work to bridge people and knowledge. At what point did all of those different things cohere for you in the idea, I'm going to be a dramaturg? Because I feel like if you want to be an editor for an author, that job is so visible that if you're sort of good with words and you're good with bringing out people's stories, you'd see that as where you're going to go. But did that happen for you or was it sort of accidental? Um, there, I mean, there, there was a pretty sort of clear, like once I heard the word dramaturg, um, which I heard I was maybe 16 or 17, which is like relatively young to be hearing about such a very, a uh, unique and unique position that is, you know, there, everybody you knows a lawyer, very few people actually know a dramaturg. Um, but once I had heard someone describe the work, I was like, oh, that sounds like something I would be very interested in and something I would be um, pretty good at, I think, maybe. Um, and so I sort of kept exploring it. And for a while, I was sort of doing a little bit of directing and a little bit of dramaturgy. Um, and then it, at that point, it was just sort of a natural progression to working more in a more focused manner on the stories themselves rather than the artists who were bringing them to life. That's really interesting. So you found that you didn't want to be the expedition leader in the end, that the cartography fitted your skills better. I really, I mean, I think there's a real freedom in that, um, that I can say, here is a marshy bit. Do we just like plunge on through it and get our feet wet? Do we build a bridge? Can we go around it this way? Can we go like that? I can present lots of different options and offer some insight into the pros and cons of doing any of those options. But the final responsibility doesn't rest on me. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, A, I, as I said, I find great freedom in that. But I also think in a collaborative environment, it's important to have someone who, who has that ability to present multiple options without having a personal stake in it. Yes, yes, that makes so much sense. And I think I've, I've definitely found that working with you because we, we worked on an Austin adaptation and then more recently on a, a, a new play that I wrote. And in, in both cases, I feel like you notice, you, you're brilliant at noticing things, whether those are sort of tiny things like, oh, it's the wrong month right now, or big things like, you know, this character wouldn't say that. But then you sort of open it up rather than sort of shutting it down, which I feel like theatre is such a collaborative world that it can be difficult for all the individual people and egos and everyone involved to, to work out where their space is or where their role is. And I guess I, I find that you as a dramaturg, you're wonderful at making, opening up spaces for decisions to be made rather than making people feel defensive and like, well, this is my line and this is what I do. Yeah, I would, I mean, it's really nice to hear that because that's certainly what I'm aiming for. And I think another way of thinking about dramaturgy is a dramaturg is an advocate for the play. And frequently that means advocating on behalf of the playwright to the other collaborative artists. But sometimes that's also reflecting back to the playwright. Is this text the helping tell the play that you want to tell. Um, mm. so sort of advocating for the play itself. Right, wonderful. Yeah, I like that as a, as a big question. And so when you first get, I mean, your answer might be lots of different ways, but just out of curiosity, when you first get a new play or you first meet a new playwright that's being commissioned to write a new play, mm -hmm. what, what is your sort of process? What Do you have a sort of, you want to read the whole play first or hear the idea first, or is there something else you want to do? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I read a lot of new plays, both for my job and then I'm also reading for other competitions as well. And it's, it's a little bit like Christmas morning in that like before I, before I crack into it, it could be anything and it could be great. Um, and so I do like for my first encounter to be with the play itself. Um, and I, 
I take very scattered notes. Like I don't stop and think of it. I try and let the play just wash over me. So my notes are really just um, sort of impressions and noting major plot points and stuff like that. Um, and then I sit with it and think about it and, and try and sort of articulate all of uh, a, a more cogent response. Um, and when I meet with a playwright, it's, I really try and let questions drive the conversation um, to understand what it is that they're trying to achieve. Um, and then, then it's a sort of navigation of what the playwright is trying to achieve and where they are or not um, achieving that in the play already. Um, mm -hmm. And then sort of adjusting course, if a new idea pops up and they say, oh, I want the play to achieve X and Y, or Y instead of X, then how, do, how does that shift the perspective on the play? Um, I frequently, because of the way that much of my work with New Place has begun through uh, various competitions, both in my current job and some of my previous work, I also have the privilege of um, seeing some of the um, written responses that were part of the application process. You may recall when you sent us the defamation of Cicely Lee, we also asked you to like write a few sentences about how the play spoke to uh, Cymbeline. And so that is also part of uh, my research into understanding your intentions for the play. And so mm -hmm. that comes into it. Um, and I just try and listen really hard to what the play is saying, to what the playwright is saying. And then as we uh, add collabor collaborative artists, trying to listen really hard to them as well. Um, because I think one of the things that can be really exciting is I, there may be something sticky for me about a play that I'm not able to articulate what it is, but an actor mm -hmm. or designer, they may ask the question in a different way that unlock something for the playwright. So trying to just sort of absorb all of that and then reflect it back out to the playwright um, as necessary. Yeah. Like, again, I'm just gonna like keep throwing the metaphors, but it's sort of dramaturg as translator that when, that it's, it's not a mistake that when you get notes from ASC, they all come through me in an attempt to make differing artistic voices all sort of part mm. of the same conversation. Yeah, wonderful. So again, you're, you're having that bridge function as well yeah. by being you know, the single place that the information, everyone has to queue at that bridge and go through there if they want to, their thoughts to come across. Um, thank you so much for that exploration. Um, you mentioned a couple of times the ASC, the American Shakespeare Centre, mm -hmm. and also Cymbeline, which is of course a little known Shakespeare play. Um, so I feel like that's actually a really beautiful bridge for me to ask you. So could you tell me more about the slightly unusual institutional context you work within and also the particular competition that you've mentioned a couple of times? Sure. So Shakespeare's New Contemporaries um, is a program of the American Shakespeare Center that sets out to discover, develop and produce new plays that are inspired by or in conversation with um, Shakespeare's plays, uh, inspired by our conversation with Shakespeare's plays. Yep, that's, 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 yep, that's, right. that's <laughs> nugget. Um, and some of the things that are, well, I will start with the thing that is not unique. P writers and artists of all stripes have been responding to Shakespeare since Shakespeare. That is not new. What is new is, uh, the, the frame that we've built around that, um, which is that we are looking for plays that engage with Shakespeare's work, but also uh, are engaging with Shakespeare's staging conditions and the way that we produce in, uh, in the Blackfriars Playhouse here at the American Shakespeare Center, which you know quite a deal about Shakespeare's staging conditions, but for folks who might not, this includes things like a larger cast, a universal lighting, um, no um, special technical effects, 
and a number of other things like that. Um, and I feel that that really pushes writers beyond what a lot of other contemporary playwright, playwriting is asking for. Um, mm -hmm. So that's sort of what the project is. Um, and then, as I sort of mentioned in my nutshell, discover, develop, and produce. So it is an open application process, which means that anyone in the world can write a play and send it to us and it will be read. Um, and we get in the neighborhood of 200 for each, 200 submissions for each application cycle. Um, and then we spend some time getting to know the playwright, bringing them in to work with our actors on the play and also giving them a chance to see our other work at the ASC so they have a sense of sort of what, in what context their work will be produced. Uh, and then the play gets a world premiere production in rotating rep with the Shakespeare play that it is responding to. Um, and it's that rotating rep piece that's why we steer clear of words like translation or adaptation. Um, we are producing in a context where it's very possible that an audience member might arrive at, in the afternoon, see a matinee of a Shakespeare play, go have a nice dinner, and then come back and see this contemporary play. So thinking about that experience um, it is uh, something we think about when looking at these plays. Um, and then also the playwright gets a $25,000 uh, award, which uh, is, I think, really significant. Um, and it's really fun to tell playwrights that they've been selected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can imagine because yeah, when I got your your voicemail for the defamation of Cicely Lee, that was an extremely exciting moment. So I can imagine if I'm anything to go by, but yeah, people must scream a lot <laughs> and jump up and down. Screams, tears, laughter, all of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and um, and as you've mentioned, the Blackfriars is such a unique space and a sort of such a unique performance context with those aspects of sort of universal lighting where actors and audience can see and respond to each other. And obviously as someone who works on Shakespeare's plays as a researcher, that was particularly exciting for me. But what, how did you feel when you first became aware, aware of the job and first went for it and first learned about this as a sort of a space for new writing? Did it, did it surprise you? Was it, was it new to you? Uh, yeah, I was unfamiliar with the American Shakespeare Center before uh, the job uh, existed. And the other thing that's sort of, uh, I wasn't replacing anybody. My position was one that was created to go along with, with the project. So there was no sort of setup for that. Um, and I, in applying for the job, I did a lot of uh, research, but hadn't really seen, but I hadn't actually seen any of the performances. Um, so initially it was a very intellectual approach of what these staging conditions might be. Um, and I came down and I did my interview and unlike other interviews where I was like, maybe that's great, maybe it's not, I felt really clearly that either uh, I was a really strong candidate for the job because of my new play experience, or it was I was a really terrible candidate for the job because <laughs> I haven't had a ton of Shakespeare experience, and that there was like nowhere in between those two. Um, and thankfully, they seemed to think uh, at that time, who knows what they think now, but they seemed to think uh, <laughs> that I was an okay candidate. Um, so it wasn't until after I took the job that I actually got to see the work. Um, <sighs> which is in general i don't know that i would recommend that but for me it really uh it really worked um that there was a particular uh sensation of being in that space with the shared light and the audience on three sides and watching a story unfold in that way um that I couldn't intellectualize and I couldn't have picked up from the research. Mm. And yeah, so, so, but having the sort of intellectual uh, framework first really helped me then translate that experience in how I talk to playwrights who also haven't seen what we do. Um, right. So again, I'm yeah. back to translating, I'm back to bridging, 
that I started out with a sort of articulated, uh, intellectualized, here's what the Blackfriars is, and here's what ASC does. And then I experienced it and understood it. And now I sort of reflect that back out to playwrights who are considering writing something for the project. Um, That's and that, it's, I also think you are unique among our SNC playwrights in that you had seen our work, New Shakespeare Staging Conditions, had had work produced at ASC before writing Defamation of Cicely Lee. Um, but with our other playwrights, there is a real uh, visible evidence in the rewriting process based on like when they get to see our work and when they get to That's see our so work. That's so interesting. Yeah. Um, and it's like small little things, like I don't know if it would be visible to a naked eye, but because I see each of the different drafts, I see when a playwright starts adding in entrances from the house, when a playwright starts adding in more asides, when a playwright starts mm. adding in more musical elements, um, when a playwright starts adding in spoken text that establishes location. These are sort of subtle things that I think um, are learned from being in the experience of uh, an ASC production. That makes so much sense. That was so really rambly. I don't know if oh, no. that answered things. <laughs> no, it did. It did. Thank you. And it was really helpful, I think, because I suppose it's, yeah, that intellectual difference between this is a reconstructed version of Shakespeare's Blackbriars Playhouse and this is how it works when the actors and the audience can talk, well, at least the actors can talk to the audience when some of the audience members can be on stage and the difference that makes that kind of embodied experience. I mean, I could, I could keep talking about this all day because I find it fascinating, but sadly, I think we've got to the point where I might have to ask you our final question. Um, oh, no, so I'm hey. aware, I know it's gone so quickly. Um, so I'm aware this is a horrible question, but we ask it to everyone um, and we say it can be as personal as you like or as um, provisional as you like, but it actually gives us quite a nice window into how people think. So, and what would you say literature is? I, so one of the things that I know about dramaturgy um, because both of my parents are both classicists um, is the root turg um, means the work and it's yeah. shared it is shared with metallurgy um, and it's also shared with liturgy um, which i believe so like, please, if you're a classicist watching this, please don't shame me if I'm wrong. This is like all very foggy. <laughs> I believe that liturgy is the, the work of the people or, or something, something in that vein. And so then I extrapolate out from there. Uh, this is very nerdy and rambly and I apologize. Or maybe that's what you want, so I don't apologize. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that for me, literature um, is connective and literature um, literature brings people together I think and when I when I think about literature um, because you do because so much of my work I consider drama rather than literature I'm thinking primarily of like the novels that I love to read um, more than like my job um, but so literature as a text-based, uh, connective and collaborative experience of humanity. That's Ooh. what I'm going to go with. I love that. And because that does, if we think of drama as literature in its written or it's in, in its performed form, that sort of fits for that as well. So I like how capacious that is while at the same time being specific. That's beautiful. Thank you very much. Well, that's such a nice note to end on as sadly, I wish we could just keep talking, but we do have to end. So thank you so much for joining me on A Bit Lit, Anne. Thank you. <laughs>